G.I. Joburg is the code name for South Africa's daring, highly trained review force. Their purpose? To offer reviews and information on the finest G.I. Joe toys from the past and present. Today we take a look at the Mean Dog. In a motor pool of extremely well-armed vehicles, none pack a punch quite as devastating as the Mean Dog. Essentially a massive gun on wheels, and yet so much more. You best believe the rest of her is up to G.I. Joe specifications. Highly mobile and packing a few surprises, the Mean Dog is ferocious, brutal and unrelenting. The primary armament is the awesome 20mm electric Gatling gun with a blinding cyclic rate of 3000 rounds per minute. In addition to the gun, she possesses twin missile boxes packed with 10 surface to air missiles and a 50 cal up front. Designed as an articulated rig, it boasts the unique feature of separating into three distinct battlefield components. The gun forms a standalone artillery piece that can be dug into four to fire position. The rear section can form a roving anti-aircraft unit, and the front section becomes a three-man scout vehicle to police the area. To release the scout vehicle, pull the rear vehicle's bumper forward and push the tires through. To release the cannon, simply lift the single rear tab and pull away. The blueprints refer to this as a fast attack scout car. It seats a trio of crew behind a slatted grill. The forward positions each possess a joystick control. It seems the mean dog is adequately providing for lefties. We can all agree it has a rather unique design and not a terribly successful one. Resembling a reverse tricycle, we are led to believe that the vehicle's engine is located here. Presumably she steers by articulating at this joint, but with none of the vehicle's weight over the steerable wheels, I don't see this being a very good system at all. It would be akin to trying to steer a car by swinging its trailer from side to side. The slatted grille up front is a distinctive design choice for the Joes. Not many vehicles have such a feature. Joe Land vehicles tend to fall into two categories, glass fronts with no armor at all, and completely enclosed armored fronts. The Scout car straddles the two. Its wide slats are as much of a death trap as if it had been glass. Perhaps we should imagine that beneath the slats is thick bulletproof glass, offering better driver survivability. Optimally, I would prefer a thick, unslatted armored front profile. Better yet, do away with the two additional seats and put in a large, detailed and armored engine block, which would more convincingly power this vehicle's movement. But in an age where figure interactivity trumped all other design imperatives, I can understand this choice. Putting three Joes inside is always better than one. The commander position has access to the vehicle's 50 caliber armament, but sadly there is no hatch cover for him to button up like on the Warthog also released in 1988. The blueprints refer to this combination as the automatic cannon vehicle. It possesses the bulk of the Mean Dog's firepower with the Gatling gun and surface-to-air missiles. The gunner sits quite deeply into the turret, and the driver occupies a central position beneath. There are two foot pegs on the back sill for infantrymen, and a tow hook for any additional weapon systems you might want to bring along. The surface-to-air missile launchers ratchet to hold their positions and extend away from the vehicle for firing. This level of care is unparalleled from a series of toys that seldom understand the concept of operator safety. Mmm, orange, warm. The missiles are molded in white plastic and have a tendency to yellow over time and exposure. It is a very back-heavy affair, as the front is literally hollow. In spite of its unequal weight distribution, it stays on four wheels. Barely. It also continues the slatted armor design, even if it fulfills no purpose as the driver cannot slink down into the vehicle. Targeting information for the weapons are provided by unique stickers. I would have preferred it if the split apart feature was done away with and the scout car was fused to the front of the cannon vehicle. It would have looked like this. But getting two vehicles in one must have allowed for fun play patterns. With the mean dog, you and your friend got a fun vehicle to play with. If you had a third buddy in tow, 
the main gun station makes for another separate unit, held in place by four positionable feet on a sliding ring. It possesses a fantastic range of motion, 360 degrees around and up to 80 degrees in elevation. The big weapon holds its elevation very well thanks to a ratcheted grip. A thumb wheel spins the barrels, but practically I foresee two problems with this unit. It would need a crane to remove or replace it, and it would topple over from sustained automatic fire. The blueprints insist that this is a 20mm cannon, but if you measure the diameter of the barrels and multiply that figure by 1 to 18 scale, the size is a lot closer to 40 mils, making an already ferocious weapon into something that could level the city. And definitely fall over. 40mm shells are big, like the size of coke bottles. If the gunner's legs occupy the weapon's mount, I want to know where the ammunition is. The Mean Dog was first introduced in issue 72 of the Marvel Comics G.I. Joe series, and was featured in a self-titled issue in number 89. In spite of the vehicle being showcased for an entire issue, the split-apart feature was duly ignored by writer Larry Harmer. What was not ignored was the Mean Dog's included operator and his uncanny ability to break things. In his introduction, he succeeds in breaking something in almost every panel. Wildcard is very simply dressed. It appears he has no difficulty tearing off his green shirt sleeves. And shirt buttons don't seem to agree with him either. It's a functional, minimal, and almost laid-back approach from a guy who clearly clambered into his cramped, armored vehicle, broke a sweat, and decided to make some wardrobe adjustments. His sidearm placement suggests he's a southpaw, like me. Good thing the mean dog controls cater accordingly. Paint applications are sparse, especially on his sculpted belt, which was omitted completely. He comes with three accessories, which is quite a lot for a vehicle driver. A helmet, a machete, and a backpack sheath for the machete. The helmet seems adequate for muffling the extremely loud noises the mean dog and its weapon no doubt produce. And the machete is a functional tool for clearing back vegetation either to allow the vehicle to pass or to emplace the cannon when it is deployed. Wildcard's head was reused in 1991 for a new character, the battlecopter pilot Major Altitude. This must cause some confusion back at base. Allowing Wildcard anywhere near a battlecopter would be a very big mistake. The Mean Dog and Wildcard are not without their faults, but as a bringer of all-out mayhem, the pair are hard to beat. As an anti-aircraft weapon particularly, the Mean Dog would find a great deal of use, a necessary inclusion for any Joe armored column. It is a fun toy, and one that will typically set you back anywhere between $40 and $80 loose, depending on the condition. Take special note of whether the cannon tip and all the missiles are present. But with land vehicles, provided nothing is missing, my philosophy is the more beat up, the better. Yo-Jo.